welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, founder of the Tudor Society. Now, where am I taking you back to today? Well, 1501, uh, in the reign of that first Tudor monarch, King Henry VII. For on this day in Tudor history, the 27th of September, 1501, at five o'clock in the afternoon, Catherine of Aragon, daughter of Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella I of Castile, set sail for England from Laredo in Cantabria, Spain. Catherine was going to England to marry King Henry VII's son and heir, Prince Arthur. Catherine had originally set sail from the port of A Coruña on the 17th of August, but strong storms in the Bay of Biscay had forced her fleet to land at Laredo near Bilbao. After hearing of her first failed attempt to reach England, Catherine's future father-in-law, King Henry VII, sent one of his very best captains, Stephen Butt, to steer her ship through the treacherous Bay of Biscay. Rather hurt than me. I mean, the Bay of Biscay is uh, rather bad. I mean, we went on a ferry from, I think it was Santander to Portsmouth. And even in today's ferries, huge ferries, um, it can get rather rough at times. So I can't quite imagine what it was like to travel from Spain to England on uh, Tudor-style ships. So rather her than me, and can you imagine actually being sort of wrecked, having your fleet driven back by storms, and then knowing that you've got to go through it again? Not good. Now, negotiations for a marriage agreement between England and Spain had begun in 1488, when King Ferdinand sent his ambassadors to England. According to historian David Starkey, Ferdinand saw an opportunity he had a daughter, Henry VII had a son, and a marriage agreement could unite England and Spain against their common enemy, France. In 1489, Henry VII sent his ambassadors to Spain to settle the agreement, and in March 1489, in the Treaty of Medina del Campo, the two kings agreed to a marriage treaty and an alliance. Ferdinand and Isabella agreed to pay Henry VII a marriage portion or dowry of 200,000 crowns split into two instalments. And Henry agreed to settle a third of the Prince of Wales's lands on Catherine so that she'd have an income if Arthur died. Although Henry VII wanted the three-year-old Catherine sent immediately to England, her parents refused, and David Starkey points out that in the 11 years, yes, 11 years, between the signing of the treaty and Catherine arriving in England, there were many times when it looked as if the marriage would be abandoned. For example, in 1492, when Henry VII made the peace of Etat with France, and also when Perkin Warbeck challenged Henry for the English throne. However, on the 18th of July, 1497, Henry VII ratified new treaties with Spain. And at Woodstock in Oxfordshire in July 1497, Prince Arthur pledged his troth to Catherine in front of his parents and the court. And De Puebla, the Spanish ambassador, acted on behalf of Catherine, pledging her troth to Arthur, because of course, Catherine wasn't there. The couple were now formally betrothed and wedding preparations began in earnest. After this formal betrothal, Elizabeth of York, Arthur's mother, started writing to Isabella and Catherine in an attempt to get to know her future daughter-in-law and also to establish communications so that preparations could be discussed. Now, Catherine didn't speak English. She spoke Latin and Spanish. So it suggested that she should learn French from her sister-in-law, Margaret of Burgundy, so that it could be a common language between Catherine and her ladies in England. Catherine spent the next two years with Margaret and quickly learned French. Elizabeth also made it clear that Catherine's entourage of ladies should be beautiful and of high birth. Ferdinand and Isabella also had their demands. They demanded that there should be two proxy weddings before Catherine actually departed from Spain to go to England. 
on the 19th of May 1499 at Tickenhall Manor in Bewdley. Arthur and Catherine, represented by de Puebla again, were declared husband and wife. A second proxy wedding then took place in December 1500, and that time there was even a wedding feast to celebrate. The marriage treaty between England and Spain had specified that the wedding between Catherine and Arthur should take place at the end of Arthur's 14th year, i.e. September 1500. But although word came that Catherine was to travel in spring 1500, it just didn't happen. Isabella of Spain had been grief-stricken by the death of her heir and grandson Miguel in 1500, just four years after the death of her only son and heir, Don Juan, in 1496, and two years after the death of Miguel's mother, Isabella's daughter, also named Isabella. Isabella fell into depression, and it's likely that she didn't want to be parted from Catherine. Also in spring 1500, the Moors of the Alpujarras in southern Spain rebelled, and Isabella and Ferdinand had more pressing things to think about than sending their daughter to England. Catherine's departure was therefore delayed as the family journeyed south to deal with the revolt. After the defeat of two rebellions in southern Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella promised that Catherine would leave Spain for England on the 24th of June 1501, the feast of St John the Baptist. In May 1501, Catherine's departure was delayed for a few days as the Spanish princess fought off a fever. But she finally left the beautiful Alhambra Palace in Granada, southern Spain, on the 21st of May to begin her 500 plus mile journey to the northern coast of Spain to set sail for England. The extreme heat and the fact that she had to cross mountains meant that the journey was hard and slow. Catherine and her parents didn't reach the coastal region of Galicia until early August. A fleet was waiting and Catherine said what must have been a tearful goodbye to her parents and her homeland of Spain. Although Catherine's fleet was once again buffeted by storms, this time off the coast of Brittany, they were able to carry on. They'd been bound for Southampton, but they landed safely at Plymouth on the 2nd of October, 1501. I can only imagine Catherine's relief at being on dry land. Catherine married Prince Arthur on the 14th of November, 1501 at St. Paul's in London. The marriage, of course, came to an end when Arthur died on the 2nd of April, 1502, and Catherine went on to marry Arthur's brother, King Henry VIII, in June, 1509. So I do, I do feel very sorry for Catherine, knowing what it's like to travel from southern Spain to northern Spain in car. I mean, that is hours and hours, and it really is a gruelling journey by car. I can't quite imagine what it must have been like doing that journey um, with horses and on foot and that. And then getting to the northern Spain coast and having to take a ship to England. I just don't envy her in any way whatsoever. She must have been so thankful when she landed on dry land in England after that arduous journey. So that's what happened on this day in Tudor history. Not such a bad one today. Um, I'll be back with another Tudor history event tomorrow. Who knows whether it will be good or bad. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking round about there. You can hit a bell to be notified as videos go live. You can, of course, give this video a like as well. And do have a browse around as well. There are obviously on this day in Tudor history videos going back to the 1st of January, but there are also there's the questions about Amber Lynn series and various other Tudor history videos too so do take a look thank you for joining me see you tomorrow bye bye